Jetzt geht es nämlich los hier mit der Extrication Challenge. Und ich werde nach oben gehen und jetzt gibt es keinen Kommentar mehr, meine Damen und Herren. Das Kommentar wird jetzt ausgeschalten und nur noch im Livestream unter live.holmatro.com verfügbar sein. All right, ladies and gentlemen, right next to me standing now is Ian Dunbar, rescue consultant from Holmatro. Good morning, Ian. Good morning, Felix. How are you doing? I'm pretty good. Um, have you seen what happened here? Accident in the middle of the pit? What no, it's, it's the second one this morning. It's a very dangerous stretch of road, I think. <laughs> it's really dangerous here. So um, we've got a team from... This team is from Hampshire, again in the UK. It's the second of uh, three teams we have from the UK today. I'm happy to say we're welcoming the current world extrication champions into the pits this morning, <laughs> which is Hampshire. They are the current world All champions. All right, wow. So um, what's happening right now? Uh, the team have entered the pit. The officer in charge has done a 360-degree survey. They've identified one patient in the blue car, which is upside down. It always happens that the patient's in the upside down car, not the one on its wheels. <laughs> it's that kind of crash. Um, so what they're doing now is that the incident commander will start to formulate a plan based on the information he's seeing. The guys are stabilizing the vehicles and looking at initial patient access. And the patient is uh, on the back seat? Or? The patient is currently lying on the roof of the vehicle. So now he's telling his team about the connection. Like yeah, he's telling the team um, different, uh, what we call powertrains in English, offer different hazards. So uh, a hybrid vehicle will offer a different set of hazards from a petrol-driven vehicle. Uh, diesel is very similar to petrol in, in terms of the hazards, uh, except diesel will not readily ignite, and also it's it's more of a slip hazard if it spills. So, if it's petrol, diesel, if it's a hybrid, or it's uh, you can even get hydrogen fuel cell vehicles now. They have to identify it, and then the team will work around whatever hazards are associated with that powertrain. trying to get the victim out of the back window, right? The rear window? Well, what I guess they're going to do is they're managing the glass, but they're probably going to open and remove the rear hatch and take the patients out, out the back. Das wird eine ganz tolle 
So, wir werden mal etwas näher rangehen, damit wir uns das ein bisschen besser anschauen können. We're going to get a little bit closer, so we can take a closer look to what's actually happening right now. So you can see, Felix, at the moment, they're effectively what we call tunneling. So it's a very restricted method of getting into the vehicle. But what they have to do is get in and, and make more uh, space. What the incident commander is doing is he's actually looking at the information, looking at the, the vehicle, looking at the patient location, and he's actually coming up with an extrication plan. So he's going to decide what is the best method of taking the patient from the vehicle. He will communicate that to the team. He will ask for any feedback, depending on their experience or whatever they've seen. And they will all agree on a plan and then they will carry out that plan. If, if they notice anything that is, is affecting the plan, that is making something difficult, they may change, uh, may, they may completely change the plan or slightly adapt the plan. So a good incident commander will foresee things that are a potential problem and overcome them, as we say in English, on the fly. So immediately overcome yeah. them as soon as possible. So what's the most difficult thing about an upside down extrication like this one? Um, when I teach firefighters extrication, I don't teach them to look at cars on their roof, on the wheels or on the side. I just teach them to just look at, it's a vehicle. It has exactly the same points of strength, the same entry points. It's, it's, it's exactly the same. It just offers a slightly different set of challenges. The thing to bear in mind is that this is a, a patient-led extrication, so everything they do is dependent upon the patient. If the vehicle is rolled over, there are a lot more forces involved in a rollover, so it's likely, although not definite, that the patient's injuries are far worse. It's, it's, again, that is only what we call the rule of thumb. It's not definite, but it's a consideration. So that's the first thing. But secondly, you can see that with a vehicle on its wheels, we have ready access. Vehicles are designed to be on the wheels and open with four doors. As soon as it's on a roof, and especially when it's put against concrete, everything becomes a compromise. So the other thing is, you know, it, it offers a different set of challenges. The vehicle is now on its roof, so things like fuel and oil spills are more prevalent. So it's just, it's just an, another way of looking at extrication. Um, and that's why throughout the next five, uh, five and a half days now, we'll see vehicles on the roof, vehicles on the wheels, vehicles with difficult stability, uh, just a whole host of challenges for the teams. And like I say, these guys are the world champions. They won the world championship last year in the UK. Um, and they beat off, you know, competition from all over the world. So we, we should expect doing. good things from this team, yeah. <laughs> So you can already see, you know, it's it's not the easiest thing in the world simply getting into a vehicle. Yeah. Uh, because the way they have to get in now is through the rear of the vehicle, and we all know the vehicle wasn't designed for that. So, like I say, it's just a completely different set of challenges. And what's happening, even though it's only it's a nice 18 or 19 degrees, the guys are getting hot now. Yes. Yeah, they're getting a little bit stressed. They know the clock is ticking, so the pulse rate goes up, the adrenaline flows. Uh, the decision-making process is still strong, it's still good, but as you go through the 20 minutes, it, things become a little bit more difficult. You know, stress definitely plays a factor. And when these guys do it for real, they feel exactly the same stresses because they really do take this competition seriously. Of course, yeah. And just like with the previous scenario, is the green car movable? This time, it, this time the green car is not movable. Okay. Yeah. No. <laughs> So you can hear the instant commander now, he's, he's actually saying to the guys, come on guys, this is good. It's, it's actually proven, and I've witnessed it many times, that if the instant commander keeps momentum, the team actually perform a lot better. So the simple act of saying, come on guys, this is great, this is great, it increases momentum and the team, the, you see it in front of your eyes, the team work faster. Is there actually a way to move the seats back? Yeah, you can manipulate the seats in many ways, but it, of course it all depends who's in the vehicle. We now have a patient in the car, we may have, let's see, one, two, three, we may have two medics currently in the vehicle. 
The reason you need two medics is one medic will be in there controlling the C-spine, while the other medic does uh, top-to-toe survey. So at the moment we have a casualty, or a patient, and we have two other firefighters inside the car, so that is a very cramped environment now. Okay. So simply moving seats becomes very difficult, if not difficult, impossible. Difficult, yeah. So you can see, because we've restricted the access, uh, yeah, we call this technique tunneling. They're effectively going to go in and come out with a patient in the same space. So it's it's not an easy thing to achieve, you know. It's uh, inside the vehicle; it's probably five or six degrees warmer. And as I say, you know, they they're starting to sweat Heat now. Up. They can't take the helmets off because it's for protection. The guys are wearing dust masks because of glass dust. Um, and yeah, you, you can start to see the. Uh, the levels of sweat now start to increase. <laughs> and on you and I as well. Yes, of course. <laughs> the interesting thing is, even though these guys are world champions, you know, it all depends on the day. Sometimes you have a good day, sometimes you have a bad day. It depends what the vehicles present, it depends what the casualty presents. It depends how much beer you've drunk the night before as well. <laughs> Hope they haven't had any last night. Six more minutes to go. Yeah, we're we'll probably looking at yeah six or seven minutes. Um, this is actually. It's, it, it might seem a little bit labour and a little bit slow, but that, what, they've, what they've created is, is good, safe access to the patient. Um, they're working very, very methodically. And the assessors look, uh, they're not giving anything away, the assessors, they're keeping very, very straight faces, <laughs> which is very professional of them. Tell us something about our um, command assessor, Alan. He's been a firefighter or? Alan joined the fire service in 1962 as a oh. junior firefighter. <laughs> so he joined the fire service, actually in England, he lives in Australia now, but he joined the fire service in the same year the Beatles had their first number one. <laughs> okay, so he's very experienced, very knowledgeable, and he's, uh, he's an assessor for Arrow, which is the Austra Australasian Road Rescue Organization. Okay. So he's assessed at many competitions. Um, he's been good enough uh, to jump on a plane and come over to Europe to, uh, to assess this week. So, Great. Um, he's uh, very experienced. Uh, I wouldn't like to meet him, meet him in a dark alley of an evening. Um, <laughs> but he really enjoys this. You know, the assessors, they, <laughs> you know, they do this for the love of what they do. They have a lot of knowledge and a lot of enthusiasm and passion for this. So they, uh, they do it to assist the teams and really you know, try and improve the teams. And that's why everyone's here at the end of the day. It's a nice event, the weather's nice, and uh, everyone's having a nice time, but this 20 minutes is what it's all about for the teams, and they, they get a lot of good value from the assessors because they pass on a lot of knowledge. Even the world champions will make mistakes today. That's the nature of extrication. It's like we said in the previous um, challenge, that education is more important than actually winning at the end of the day. Yeah, and it's... Uh, it's really interesting. I've just noticed this is Hereford and Worcester. This is not Hampshire. So these are not the world champions. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, Hampshire are coming up next. So we've just spent 15 minutes watching the wrong team. <laughs> uh, but that's that's that's, that's live uh, streaming TV for you. Uh, yeah, this is Hereford and Worcester. They they're not world champions, but they aspire to be world champions. Um, yeah, I mean, as as for education, it's uh, you know firefighters are constantly learning. Every day is a day at school. Um, and if 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 in terms of education firefighters take the foot off the gas it means that sometime in the future someone might get seriously hurt if it's not one of them it's a member of the public so um, they you know they, they get paid to be the very best and the very professional at what they do um, you know if we work in finance and we make a mistake someone gets overpaid or underpaid if we make a mistake <laughs> here someone gets hurt so it's very important education is uh, it's at the top of everybody's list so now we know it's Hereford and, and no it is it is Hampshire it's not Hereford and Worcester I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll go back to what we originally said. These are ex world champ. Sorry, the current world champions. I too didn't have any beer last night, by the way. <laughs> and as we've seen, uh, people are listening to this and they've started tweeting about our conversations already. So, uh. <laughs> yeah, if you want to write about this on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, please use the hashtag 
Paul Macho Life. That's a hashtag for the event. That's a hashtag for the whole week. So if you tweet any pictures from Intershuts or any pictures from the inside of the booth in Hall 26, make sure you use hashtag Paul Macho Life so we can find your pictures. Yeah. So you can now hear the guys who are using a reciprocated saw inside the vehicle. Um, reciprocated saw has its uses, but you can hear it's very noisy right by the patient as well. Uh, but sometimes it's 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 a thing that the uh, the guys decide to use. So. So you can, I'm just starting to detect now a little, the teams are just a little bit more frantic um, because I think they know the time is, is, uh, is rapidly approaching where the whistle is going to blow. So things are getting a little bit more hectic. Uh, they're, not, they're still working very, very safely in trying to make progress, but uh, as the time drips down, it becomes a little bit more difficult for these guys. You detected a little bit of movement in the vehicle there. Um, yeah. What they need to do is try and keep the car as, as still as possible at all times. If, if there's movement, um, that can be actually amplified into the casualty as well. So if they have any injuries, it may or may not. Medical research suggests several things. It may or may not uh, potentially be negative for the casualty. So just so we know, Felix, we're definitely sure now this is Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service. <laughs> I think I saw a name tag before that says yes, Hampshire. Yeah, it's, it's Hampshire. I've just seen that switching between two different Holmatra tools is incredibly fast. Yeah, it is. Um, we're very lucky with Holmatra. Well, we're not lucky, we created our own look, but um, we developed a single host system 10 years ago, and it allows for very fast, rapidly changing of tools, which is absolutely perfect. It's quick and it's safe. It's, uh, it's, it's really, uh, I'm glad to say, we're the market leader, even though uh, you know, we're here for education, but we are the market leader, and it's it, a lot to do with the single host system, which is fabulous.
It's actually the first time we're seeing the vehicle, uh, the victim, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's how the world champions do that. <laughs> Yeah. 